previously on the dragon ship you know basically obulatory shift is is it's it's, it's, it's an interesting topic you know i want to credit wiki because i did a little bit of research on there and uh, thor's also got some graphics that we're going to put up here as well uh, the estrus evolved for, to facilitate reproduction and maximize reproductive success or the success of passing one's genes by producing offspring that are most likely to survive and reproduce themselves. The ovulatory shift hypothesis proposes that motivation and desire to mate should increase during the fertility window. So believe it or not, a lot of these girls, they go through these cycles in their hormonal month to month to month thing where it's, you know, hey, they're in ovulation, you know, estrus and all those good things. And so, yes, Thor? Would you like to see the graph while you're presenting? Yeah, that would be awesome, man. Let's, start All right, let's do it. This is a good one, by the way. Yeah. This one kind of shows the different uh, type of uh, hormones throughout a menstrual cycle and why this is so influential on uh, female choices in men. And mm -hmm. Phil's going to give us a, a good indication of why that might be. Yeah, it's, it's, it's an interesting graphic because when you really start to listen to some of these things that they put out here, you know, on this, there's actually scientific information about this. You know, they've actually broken it down. The obligatory sh shift hypothesis proposes the motivation and desire to mate should increase during that fertility window. And you can see that right there on the graphic. An ideal mate could have many qualities, resources to care for offspring, the physical ability and social status to protect a mate and offspring and compatible compatible personality for long-term pair bonding it's interesting when you know in, in our space in the men's space especially the red pill community you know it's you know the younger girls are you know it's, it's it's party time and you know you know it's i'm out here and i'm looking for that that alpha itch to get scratched you know and as they they hit that that epiphany phase in their life and that that biological clock starts to tick down and they're ready to you know settle down and start having a family so i don't know so much about that pair bonding on the end of that thor what are your thoughts on that um, you know, uh, hormones definitely dry uh, play a role in particularly oxytocin after actual sex and orgasm. So I think there's a, a stronger role to play in that and the emotional bonding that occurs rather than this, this chart right here. I think this just sets up kind of, this kind of sets the, the ball on the tee ready to be driven down range, shall we say. Mm, 100%. You know, evolutionary theory and sexual selection theory suggest that an organism's top priority should be to maximize survival and reproductive success. Thus, the obligatory shift hypothesis proposes that women possess a dual sexuality, where during the fertility window, a woman should prioritize attracting and choosing a mate with the best genetic quality or good genes, since this is the only time she can become pregnant and pass on her heritable genetic qualities to her offspring. And so it kind of that kind of lays into what we talk about in this red pill space or in the, in men's self-help or whatever, the men's communities, you know, or we'll, we'll just coin MLD's phrase, right? It's uh, money, muscles, and game. You know, you got that status, you got the physicality that's going to definitely attract women, you know? And so right. that is that is a definite thing right there. Um, See, you know, birth, birth control doesn't birth control throw a, a stick in this in the spokes of the wheel in this whole deal? Yeah, definitely. And I'm going to touch on that. It does definitely, and we're going to touch on that here in a little bit, uh, Mark. I will definitely hit that. Okay, um, definitely. Um, you know, so understanding that you know you're up against a hormonal wall, guys, when it comes to women and understanding how they operate. It's it's important. So some research has suggested that over the evolutionary time women may have maximized their reproductive success by seeking good genes from extra pair copulation. Do you guys know what that means? You guys ever heard that, what that means? You guys ever I, heard that, Rafe? I don't yes. understand that. <laughs> so an extra pair copulation would be what, Thor? It would be outside of the normal mating pair. You know, like, like cheating. Holding. Yeah, <laughs> how about cuck holding? Chad? For Is Chad outside <laughs> the normal mating? Chad's outside uh, of that. Uh, certainly, you know, certainly it can be. And that's that that's that's a big part of what we're talking about right now. Yeah, Chad and Tyrone are definitely outside the uh <laughs> the, they, they fall into that category. It says uh, cheating on their partner at high fertility while also maintaining long-term pair bonding with their partner who provides parenting resources for the offspring, sometimes called 
the dual strategy hypothesis. And once again, you can find this on Wiki, but it's important to understand that a lot of the things that we read about in this side of uh, the internet, you know, or, or listen to on podcasts or live streams are definitely 100% verifiable and backed up by science. Yeah, and so, the, the sexy sun's hypothesis here. Yeah. And, and so, and that's, and that's, that's the thing, right? Is, you know, it's, it's verifiably backed up and that's the, that's the important thing. So it says, of course, an optimal partner is one with both sexy cad and good dad traits, but such a man is statistically unlikely to be common. I couldn't find the statistic on that. I don't know, Mark, Wraith, Thor, do you have any idea on what the statistics of that would be? Would that be the five, the top 5%? Well, uh, you kind of have to get back into the evolutionary psychology, such as the work that uh, Dr. David Buss did with the evolution of desire. He kind of leans towards this, at least in the part where he's worked with Dr. Marty Hazelton on this uh, ovulatory shift. Now, I think they may have taken this information as corollary evidence, and they may have shifted away from it. But at the time, they looked at this, a, a woman that's ovulating has a mate preference that is different than when she is not. And they did a lot of questions and, and answers towards this. And this seems to be backed up over time by um, by the advent of parental testing in DNA. Uh, okay. The numbers on that are quite startling. And uh, so I guess what I'm saying here is when, when, when a woman enters into that ovulatory phase, her desire for good, solid genes that are attractive to her, where she has desire, even sexual desire is uh, is stronger, at least mm -hmm. instinctual down at that mammalian brain uh, level or even below. It's get a mate, get a mate. But you know what? She also has kind of a, an emotional need for security and provisioning and that it may not be exactly the same in the exact same man. And there's evolutionary reasons for this mm -hmm. is to perpetuate the species and, and provide good genetics that survive beyond just her. So, uh, you know, realizing this, when it gets back to parental testing today, anytime you, you can look this up, I don't want to put the sticks up. We're just doing tongue in cheek uh, discussion right here. But when there is a question of parentage for children, where this comes into play, 33% are not the, 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 the father is not the father. 33% when in question. And when it's not a question, it's much lower than that, but it's still there. It's just under 20%. And they've done hundreds of thousands of parental DNA tests. And there's even a warning, and we've done it on this show before on 23andMe and Ancestry, where it says you may not want to find out, you know, because they actually have counseling services. Because what you might have thought is a blood relative, there is a possibility that it may not be the case. And it may be slightly more common than you think. And this points us right back in this direction, uh, Phil, where we have this ovulatory shift that naturally occurs. I mean, you know, mating for a woman is can be a high risk thing. The consequence oh, is. is nine months uh, or even longer, basically two years. Uh, it's nine months of kind of reduced functionality. Uh, extra food and provisions and security is needed. And then there is the, uh, you know, the extra care that she could be using to survive in order to keep the children alive to get to the point of weaning before this comes back and nature has created these hormones and these bonding hormones after sex to actually drive it i mean if you think about that kind of risk you almost have to think good god can you imagine living in the stone age phil and you're yeah. a woman you may not want kids uh mating has to be the last thing on your on your mind this is this is serious business to yeah it's by. dangerous dangerous and business so nature has uh given certain rewards and incentives that drive this that's almost beyond reason uh, you know logical thought mm. in order to make ensure uh, this happens in us and we're very unique because we're the only mammal that conceals this ovulatory period or what did i call it early it's their estrus they we concealed yeah. estrus human female women do go into heat but it is concealed and it may not even be conscious to the woman herself. However, I have met women that are very, let's say, have high sexual energy. They are very aware, very aware of when that time comes. And they've even described it as such as being in heat, yeah, much they, like yeah. certain other. Make sure you get your own copy of Thor's 
Dominant Masculine Presence Lecture. This is an hour long lecture that teaches extremely valuable yet simple techniques that will help you to improve your dominant masculine presence. You will learn how easy it is to begin building the foundation for your masculine presence and make yourself into a dominant masculine man who knows what he wants and isn't afraid to go after it. So what are you waiting for? Buy now and start your journey and start building that dominant masculine presence and become the man that you always wanted to be.